Look, you guys, the cats do not want to be in my video today. I'm trying to lure them with lunch meat and they're, they still won't come up and say hi. They don't usually get lunch meat. Oh, come say hi. Say hi. Say hi to my third graders. Ow. <laughs> Okay, you have to come up here and say hi if you want more. Come up here. Come on. See, they don't want to be in the video. They're hiding. Okay. Well, that's it. That's all the cat stuff. Let's do some fraction stuff. Okay, so as promised today, we're gonna do fractions greater than one. So here's another plug for you guys really, really, really learning your multiplication and division facts. If you can look at a fraction and boom, decide yes, that bottom number divides equally into that top number or no, it doesn't, it's gonna help you a lot with this particular task. And I'm going to show you why. So let's take a look at page 376. So here's 376. Locate fractions greater than one. Locate each fraction on the number line. Now here's what's confusing about this is that these are number lines like we're used to seeing, right? Whole numbers. This one only goes up to two. Zero, one, two. This one only goes up to three. Zero, one, two, three. This one goes up to 10, okay? So these are whole numbers, which means if we wanna make fractions, we have to break each section down into fractions. So from zero to one, that's one whole. Obviously the one whole, the size of the one whole on this number line is not the same as the size of one whole. So we can think of this as like a tiny pizza, individual pizza, medium pizza, large pizza, right? But we can still break it down into equal pieces. But for some of these, we don't have to because we're actually looking at whole numbers, even though they're represented as fractions. So let's go down and take a look. So what do we have here? Five over four. Can you do five divided by four and will you come up with a whole number? No. How about the next one? Eight divided by three. Hmm. Nope. You gotta know that though. Three, six, nine. You hit eight, no you don't. So it's not gonna be a whole number. You can't divide three into eight equally. What about five divided by one? Ooh, yeah, that's, that works. Five divided by one equals five. Okay, why is that important? Because five over one is the same as five. So if you want to find it on this number line, it's just zero, one, two, three, four, five. There it is, five. No need to break each section down into fractions. No need to do anything like that. If you can automatically see that five over one is the same as five divided by one, which is the same as five whole pieces, you're good to go. The mistake that most third graders make is that they get confused and they're thinking, well, I'm supposed to be thinking fractions. So they think about this as one fifth and then they start trying to break down all this into little tiny, tiny bits and try to put one fifth. But that would be really hard to break each of these little teeny tiny sections into five equal pieces and show one fifth. And luckily we don't have to because this is not five, one fifth, this is five holes, right? five over one. And whenever you have one as your denominator, that means you're always looking at a whole number, right? If you have six over one, that's six. If you have seven over one, that's seven. If you have a hundred over one, that's a hundred. So that one's actually, in a way it's the trickiest one on the page. In another way, it's the easiest one on the page. Okay, so I'm glad we got that one out of the way. And then let's look, do we see any other numbers that will divide evenly. Bingo. Six divided by two is three. So if I know that, then I know that I don't have to divvy up each whole 
into smaller fractions because I'm actually looking for a whole number. Six halves is the same as three. But if I wanted to break this number line up into halves, you could see that zero, one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves. Six halves equals three whole. So those two were pretty easy. The other ones though, they don't divide evenly. So um, I'm gonna have to break the fraction bars up. But I want you to notice something is that you can take a shortcut. So let's take a look at five bar over four. How do you know it's greater than one? You know because the top number is bigger than the bottom number. The numerator is greater than the denominator. Five over four, five is greater than four. So I know it's greater than one. So what I can do is I can actually start at one. I can start at one because if you remember that we're looking at pieces that are fourths and that when we have a fraction that equals one, the numerator and the denominator are the same number, then we can go, all right, of course, one is gonna be represented as four fourths. And I don't actually have to divvy up this number line between zero and one. I can just divvy up that second section. So I'm gonna just think about that second section, section between one and two as the number lines I've been divvying up. And I'm just gonna divvy that part of the number line into four equal pieces. So just like I've been doing, cut it in half, then cut my halves in half. Oops, and you know what? I did it on the first part, so now you get to see the whole thing because I just did it on autopilot. So from one whole, which is four fourths, I can just break it into my four parts and then label it. So four fourths, what's gonna be next? Five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths. And here they're asking me to find five fourths on the number line. It's right there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, and how about eight thirds? Again, I can figure out that three thirds is one and go from there. And I might even be able, if I really know my multiplication and division facts, to be able to figure out that six thirds is two and go from there. But if you can't, just start from the basics. Start from zero and break everything up into threes. So each section from zero to one gets broken into three, three, three. It's gonna look like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and label my thirds. So zero, and then I've got one third, two thirds, three thirds. And again, three thirds should align with one whole. On my number line it does, check your number line. Four thirds, five thirds, six thirds. Six thirds aligns with two. Seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds. And nine thirds aligns with three because nine divided by three is three. So your number line should look like that. And then from there, it's really easy to just find eight thirds on that number line because you've got it all labeled. So you can see there's eight thirds right there. Very easy to show that on a number line. Okay, so looks like we've got one more to do. And this time we're breaking each section into sixths. And again, let's notice, six sixths is one whole. So I need more than that because I'm looking for eight sixths. So I'm just gonna start at one whole and label that six sixths like that. And then I'm just gonna break that section between one and two into six parts, six equal parts. So I'm gonna break it into thirds and then I'm gonna break my thirds in half. So then I have six, six, seven, six, eight, six, 
9, 6, 10, 6, 11, 6, and 12, 6. And of course, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So if you've done it properly, 12, 6 should be on the tick mark that on the bottom is labeled 2. And now, 8, 6 falls in between that section of 1 and 2. So I don't have to go ahead and break up this section. I can just find 8, 6 between 1 and 2. There it is. Label it with my dot and I'm done. Okay, so I'll make another video shortly about locating one on each number line, but I will tell you that after you've done this, locating one on a number line should be a piece of cake. So no worries. Definitely email me if you have any questions at all and uh, miss you guys. Bye.